What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our downtown studios. I am John Ramdeen. He is Robin Black. UFC 206 in the books, and what a hell of a night it was at the Air Canada Center. Everybody anticipating the main event for the interim featherweight championship, and then, of course, the co-featured bout in the immortal Matt Brown taking on Donald Cowboy Cerrone. But the fight that surprised a lot of people, except for people that watch Fight Network, of course, because it was the fight that we were talking about ever since it was announced. Du Ho Choi taking on Cub Swanson. Everybody has been raving about this fight, a fight of the year candidate. Our prez, Anthony Ciccioni, saying the best fight he has ever seen. And I think that speaks volumes. It's one of the greatest fights I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, let's take a moment to thank those two great athletes, artists, combat sportsmen, martial artists for giving us everything that they had in their life leading up to that moment. And then in those 17 minutes, five, one, yeah. five, one, yeah. five. And uh, thank you guys for that fight. That was wonderful. And when we go and we're talking about how special fighting is and, and we just obsessively are trying to share with people that this isn't just what you think it is. It's also wine and art and the best food you've ever me uh, eaten. And it's all of these things and it can be all of those things. And yours is now the fight that we can show them for that because it was technically beautiful and ugly and uh, yeah, ferociously so ugly. And it had the heart and desire and, and all of the courage and all of the things. And you made our life just that little bit easier. And I want to thank both of you guys for that beautiful fight. But you really showed us uh, in your breakdown leading into this fight just how beautiful of a picture it could be. And you and I were having the conversation of what do you expect to see happen in this fight? Because it comes down to binary for, mm -hmm. of course, Duho Choi, and it's the artistic creative flair of Cub Swanson in addition to his toughness and his creativity. And one of the things that I was trying to process when you're thinking about this fight is could Cub Swanson, you know, when you're, you're typing in new yeah. passwords for yeah. Ticketmaster yeah. or anything, yeah. there's numbers there, but they're all crooked and yeah. sideways. And would the computer that was Duho yeah. Choi be able to read those numbers? He did, but not all the time throughout that fight. And we saw Cub Swanson be able to masterfully disguise his techniques and land. And we just saw really toughness and beauty and art and damage. And just when you think back to what we got to witness, we really got to see the best of both guys. It really was special. And the breakdown, what I was hoping that people would take away from it uh, is, and this is what we feel about, about Du Ho Choi, and I talked to Greg Jackson and they saw it exactly the same way, and I talked to uh, Du Ho himself and he did see it the same way, is that he's able to gather the information and he's able to process that information and then he's able to execute it. And I had people saying, oh, you're saying that because he's an Asian. Like, are you, are are you serious? You're you know, uh, it's how the man fights. It's <laughs> But so he, he gathers the information. We've seen this, we've studied him from the time he was 20 years old. He gathers the information, he processes that information and he comes up with the answer and he executes that answer. And uh, I talked to Greg and Greg Jackson, I just nerded right out. And Greg said that was exactly what they saw and they needed to keep him in process mode. Keep him in process mode. If there's a little sight that you're play that that uh, Duho is playing, where he's trying to sight up your chin, line you up. Just never be in that sight. Get his get him processing, processing, processing. And I had a hard time picking that fight. I, I I couldn't predict it. I didn't want to predict it because I have such a connection to the art of both of these two artists. And that's why we but, don't like predictions because we anticipated. With. We would see what we would see, and maybe yeah. Duho Choi would win, maybe Cub Swanson would win. And if he did, uh, and was able to track him down, the, the big issue at play, and the big thing I hope to, people would take away, is that assess, analyze, and execute versus the art, like you're saying. And so if the art was moving in such ways as art does, and the music was flowing in the ways that music flows, and a painting where you add a splash of extra <laughs> yeah, color, yeah, yeah. it's very hard to quantify that. If computers don't go in and tell you what art is. And could uh, Duho's advanced uh, understanding of fighting be able to read that, find that sight, and execute that punch? And the answer was not quite. He hit him, but it was never the clean, never fully in balance, never fully capable of executing. And they, uh, Greg said it was exactly the way that we had looked at it and the way many had looked at it. They needed to keep keep his, his brain never quite focusing on the execution phase. It's part of the reason that uh, Cub Swanson could uh, execute that strategy is because the fact that, that Du Ho Choi doesn't throw a lot of punches. He just waits mm -hmm. to line you up. So it's like, mm -hmm. I just have to stay moving. And if I stay moving, 
he will yeah. second guess himself before throwing the punch. He still got him. Yeah, he still, still, got still him. wobbled yeah. him, and and that was we knew that was possible. Truthfully, thinking about it in advance, educating yourself with every piece of, of information that you could have about that fight. It, could you see Duho landing on Cobb and poor Cobb asleep? Yeah, for sure. You could, you could picture that in your mind. You knew that was a possibility at any time, right down to the last minute. And, but could you have pictured Cobb with that music playing in the background and that art being shaped and drawn and, and, and processed and expressed out there, being capable of doing it and winning that way? Yeah, we, we could. And that's the one that we saw. We saw a bit of both. And both of them had to show off way more than that. Heart and chin and toughness and fearlessness and courage. It was, go back and watch it and watch it with Joe nailed it as he always does. But after you do that, uh, put music on, any kind of music, Country music works. Any music works, trust me. I listen to it with classical, but you put some loud heavy metal on there, you put some punk rock on there, you'll v view it all different. That's a classic fight, it will be forever. Both those men should be very proud of that fight. And Duho Choi, immediately after that fight, all marked up, and I don't know how he was still conscious oh. and still going and still wanting to win. He already was understanding that this was a huge moment for him. He's gonna be the featherweight champion of the world one day, I, I guarantee it. Again, I said this on the podcast, just as you say you guarantee it, you can guarantee nothing no. in this. So please disregard that. <laughs> uh, but you sure can see it, can't you? Because this moment in time is a moment in time that will shape Duho Choi forever, forever. He is going to get better. This, this time that he and Cub Swanson met and gave us this beautiful art was a turning point in his life on his road to being a featherweight champion. Uh, one of the things that I found unfortunate is uh, after the fight, uh, Cub Swanson said, you know, uh, this is for anybody that didn't believe in me, I'm paraphrasing, of course, that never doubt me again. And you feel bad because I don't think people were doubting Cub Swanson. They know what Cub Swanson's capable of. Anybody that's watched his career, they love Cub Swanson because of that. And, you know, for us, it comes down to, okay, we're making a TV show. You got to make a pick. When we, anybody that actually knows about it understands there's so many possibilities. The biggest possibility of what we figured, the outcome would just be a tremendous fight. And it between, was. And, that, and that's what we were hoping to get out of it. And that's what we got out of it. Well, I am so proud that we uh, look at these guys the way that we do, and we do our very best to help other people see it this way. You know, there was once a time where people would drink wine and they didn't know what that, how to describe that taste. We're, we view this as that is our job. We are connoisseurs of this, and we want to share this with people. And I'm really proud that we have shown people, uh, done our little tiny segment yeah. to show people a little bit more about these guys before they got together and, and shared that with us. It was a very important time at 145 pounds at UFC 206. Cub Swanson reinserts himself into the mix. And again, uh, who knows? He could be fighting for a title <laughs> sometime in the future. And you know what? In the end, yeah. it, doesn't it doesn't matter. This fight wasn't about that. It's true. And when these two guys go in there and fight, they may want both or one of them. I think there's something about Duho Choi by 2018. He's the champion. But even if they don't, when you get fights that are this beautiful, who cares about belts? That's what it comes down to, the art and the beauty of the fight. And we saw it on full display in that 15 minutes at 145 pounds.